Now in my prior podcast episode regarding this mystery surrounding Prophet Manasseh Jordan and Bishop T.D. Jakes, I endeavored to answer the question, is Prophet Manasseh Jordan talking about Bishop T.D. Jakes in a series of recent cryptic videos that he has posted on social media? In other words, I was trying to discover who is Prophet Manasseh Jordan talking about. But today, I want to focus more on the what. In other words, what exactly is Prophet Manasseh Jordan talking about if he's talking about Bishop T.D. Jakes? In my 20s, I got to be around some of the biggest men and women of God. And I got to witness things because I got to see them without their armor. One of the things that really happens and seldom talk about is that there's something called grooming. And it happens in the Pentecostal church, it happens in many churches, but I'm referring to the black church specifically. And what that means is that there'll be a bishop, a pastor, apostle, someone who has big conferences, everybody knows, oh my God, they're the holy man of God. And they will pick their victims and they groom them. In addition to analyzing the what, as it relates to these mysterious messages posted by Prophet Manasseh Jordan all over the internet, I also want to see if at all possible, honey child, if I can discover why is all of this fire and fury being directed at Bishop T.D. Jakes. Go on my Patreon where I'll be able to talk more unfiltered. The unfiltered Manasseh Jordan. Stuff I can't say in the public. Go to my bio. The link is in my bio. We'll have more of a talk about this because we're about to see some giants fall. They're going to fall very hard. But we're going to see some new giants emerge. People that we never would have thought people would listen to. <laughs> oh my God! This is going to be big. Go to my Patreon. We'll talk to you in there. Hi there. I'm Professor Blackmore and welcome back to my channel and to my church fellowship hall podcast series wherein I will continue in my struggle to try to untangle this mess that is swirling all around this church house internet about Prophet Manasseh Jordan and Bishop T.D. Jakes, allegedly. Now, if there is nothing else that I do know about this mess, I know for sure that nobody knows exactly what in the hell is going on or exactly what in the hell went on between these two men. But there are a whole lot of cryptic things being said on the internet to lead people to draw inferences about what happened when the people that are saying these cryptic things are not directly saying anything. But here are some examples of the inferences that are being drawn by people that are listening to them. Like this comment that I received in the comments section of my prior podcast episode on this topic, which states, quote, Manasseh will take T.D. to court and should, if even, to expose him. He groomed him as a young man, end quote. And this comment, which states, quote, he hasn't always been the statue that he is now. He's referring to when he was much younger, end quote. And most striking of all is this comment, which states, quote, Ma'am, if you paid attention, it happened to him when he was a child, end quote. And this is all indicative of the fact that people seem to think that Manasseh Jordan is saying that Bishop groomed him when he was a child. In other words, this is the crux of the issue that I struggle with in my effort to ascertain what exactly is Manasseh Jordan accusing Bishop of because I have never heard him say that his interactions with Bishop occurred when he was a child. But for some reason, that is what some people seem to think he has said, because there is nothing illegal in a criminal or civil context about a grown man trying to proposition another grown man for sexual purposes. And I just wanna say before I go any further, that I love Larry Reed just like anybody else. But 
I just want to break down a few things that may be leading to confusion and may be leading to people for their own reasons and their own confusion to draw incorrect inferences from what is being said. And I want to start with this. If this man, and I already gave, I'm going to say D.Y. So you know who I'm talking about. Jake's Tink. I know y'all watch and you should. You need to tell Jake's to call D.Y. instantly. Because that does not need to marry itself to Manasseh's case. If he, if he contacts Manasseh's lawyer and tells his story, she or he, because a team of lawyers that Manasseh has, is going to subpoena him to pad the case. What you mean pad the case? I'm not talking about with untruth. I'm, I'm saying that reiterates and shows the pattern and the character, not just of Bishop T.D. Jakes, but of the entire organization about 20 years ago. So then it just puts more information out that in my opinion, ain't nobody business. Larry, you saying they need to hide a crime? No, I didn't say it was a, listen, if you t dealing with two people over the age of 18 that are men, I don't, and everybody's clear, I can't call that a crime because you, you passed that age of consent and you're no longer a minor. However, I do believe that predatory grooming can happen at 38, at 28, at 58 even. And that needs to be a discussion. It's unethical, but it's civil. It may feel cr criminal. Spiritually, it's criminal. But as relates to the law, it really is not. So, it, but if he bring that information in that he says the grooming started at 15 and they didn't have sexual situation until 19. But still the point is it just makes the story more dirty. So just stop that. So call DY. Okay. So let me see if I can try to break all of this down because there was just so much in that. First of all, let's clarify that these are two different people. So on the one hand, we have someone here talking about an unknown person that he is calling D.Y. At this point, he is not talking about Prophet Manessa. He is not even claiming that anybody had any underage sexual contact with this D.Y. person. He is alleging that some grooming began when this DY was 17, but that any alleged sexual contact did not take place until DY was 19 years of age. But again, this alleged story is not about Prophet Manasseh Jordan. In addition, he also notes that this took place 20 years ago. Now, one of the critical pieces of information that we don't have is where these acts take place. But if they took place in the state of Texas, I want to remind you again that in the state of Texas, as it relates to a crime, grooming was not a thing until September of 2023 when it enacted the Texas Grooming Statute, which states, quote, that a person commits an offense under this statute if he or she knowingly persuades, induces, entices, or coerces or attempts to persuade, induce, entice, or coerce a child younger than 18 years of age to engage in sexual conduct or activity or to be a party to the conduct." End quote. And so again, not only do you have to prove that the acts are communications, are made in the furtherance of perpetuating sexual activity, the person must be a child younger than 18 years of age, and there is a three-year statute of limitations. And since this happened 20 years ago, there is no criminal exposure that I can see against anyone for these alleged claims regarding this 
DUI person under the Texas Child Grooming Statute. But let me be clear, today this would be illegal. If you're grooming children that are 17 years of age because you're going to lay in wait until the child turns 18 or 19 for you to try to approach the person for sex at that point, then you're playing with fire. Because although the statute of limitations is three years, I strongly believe that this three year statute of limitations does not start to run until that child turns 18 years of age. So this is illegal. And in my mind, legal or illegal, it's wrong because you're trying to take advantage of a person when they're young so you can try to indoctrinate them. But regarding this DY person, since they are clearly saying there was no sexual contact until the person was 19 years of age, allegedly, there will be no exposure here because this happened over 20 years ago, far exceeding the date when this statute first was enacted and far exceeding the three-year statute of limitations. And so, we still do not have anyone that I have heard who is actually saying that Prophet Manasseh Jordan is alleging any contact between him and Bishop that took place when he was under age 18. But with all of the confusing twists and turns when these stories are being told, people come away not understanding who the story is about and what actually occurred. But let's go deeper. Pam, I was a little surprised to see the literally hundreds of messages from adults to teens that were messaging me, telling me their story and what they experienced. A lot of people won't understand it if they never was affected by it directly or indirectly. And then you have another group that is just into pure worship. They're not seekers of the truth. The first thing I want to say is that there has been some, there's been messages of people saying to me, how do I get out of this lifestyle? I feel like I'm stuck in it because I'm vulnerable. This person's in a position of power. I don't have the financial, um, I don't have the finances to get a lawyer. I don't have the finances to get an attorney. They have threatened me. If I say something, they'll sue me. I'm this person, I'm that person. And so there's a lot of this demigodding that goes on with this. There's a lot of these psychological power games that takes place with this. And so now he starts talking about adults and teens who are messaging him. But we don't know if these teens are over or under age 18. And I actually hope he's not communicating with any teens that are under age 18, but I guess that ain't none of my business. But again, he's not talking about himself and he never says what actually occurred. And let me just say this right here and now. If anyone is talking about an employer employee relationship, i.e. someone who works for a pastor or a bishop, well, we have a whole body of employment law that sanctions what employers can and cannot do. It has nothing to do with whether a person is clergy and it has nothing to do with grooming. If you have an employer that is trying to have sex with you, you need to go get an attorney, a licensed attorney that is licensed to practice law in your state right now and stop wasting your time talking to Prophet Manasseh Jordan because that is point blank illegal. But let me stay focused on the matter at hand so we can investigate this a little bit further. Just recently today, I've heard from two other victims that so it's just a lot to talk about that experienced the same thing that I experienced. They were younger. <clears throat> and two of the offenders were not only a victim of grooming, as what I described in some of my previous um, videos, but of SA, sexual assault, from the same predator that groomed me and that violated me 
as a man. I know two of the victims which shared their story and went through very similar things that I went through with the same predator are ready to press charges and they said that they will press charges. Now here he says he communicated with two other victims that experienced the same thing that he experienced but they were younger. He goes on to say that they were victims of grooming and sexual assault. So let's break this down. Now, although he alleges that at the time that whatever happened to these victims when they were younger than he was, whenever whatever he alleges happened to him happened, he does not say how old they were when whatever happened to them happened. And he does not say in this video how old he was when whatever happened to him happened. So we don't know the age he was or the age of these alleged victims when these alleged acts occurred. Then he alleges that whatever happened was grooming and sexual assault of these alleged victims. And although you may assume you know who committed these alleged acts, he never says who actually committed the acts. And so we have alleged victims of sexual assault but we don't know how old they were when it occurred and we have no earthly way of assuming their ages. We don't know who they are. We don't know who committed the acts. We don't know where or in what state the acts occurred and we don't know when the alleged acts occurred. And so when it says that these unknown alleged victims will press charges, we don't know who they will press charges against and we really don't know for what they will press charges because we don't know the ages of these alleged victims when the alleged acts took place. And let me say this again, just because somebody wants to press charges doesn't mean that it will lead to an actual indictment being returned by a grand jury or a criminal complaint being filed by a prosecutor or district attorney. In other words, individuals don't necessarily control the pressing of charges. While these alleged victims can go to their applicable law enforcement officials and report the incident, they would need a prosecutor or a DA who can prove the charges beyond a reasonable doubt in the presence of an unbiased jury who is willing to bring the charges. If they don't think they can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt or if they don't think there is a great likelihood that they will be able to find 12 unbiased drawers in Dallas or Tarrant County, they're not going to bring it. And so while he talks about victims that are younger than he was, it still says nothing about his actual age when he allegedly claims that he was groomed or whatever else he alleges happened to him. But let's go a little further. I had a conversation with someone that alleged that they were in a very emotional, predominantly emotional, but not entirely, relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes. Now, this is another term in this lexicon of language that is being used. And I don't know what an emotional relationship is, but I'm pretty sure it's not illegal. And when you go back and listen to most of the things that are being said, it's all a bunch of nothing. With love and respect, Mr. Larry Reed. And we're left struggling trying to figure out what actually occurred. But let's dig a little deeper so we can see if there is any clarity at the bottom of all of these rabbit holes. And then I put up one piece of evidence of predatory and inappropriate behavior between Jakes and Manasseh. Now I seen everything, but I only snatched <laughs> a few things. Now with all due respect, Mr. Larry Reed, I love you with my whole heart, baby boy, okay? So I'm just saying this with love and respect. 
but I'm just giving you my opinion because I don't see this as evidence of anything if I'm thinking about a real court of law. So let me just put it in that context. And so this text message was sent on May the 16th, 2016. And let's say that Private Manasseh Jordan does file this lawsuit that we're all waiting for against Bishop. And this case makes it into a court of law, allegedly. If it does, Prophet Manasseh Jordan does not get to go through his text messages like they do on Judge Judy and just read them from his phone like they do on the people's court. The only way that text messages get into evidence is after a subpoena is sent to Manasseh Jordan's cell phone provider by Bishop T.D. Jake's attorneys or authenticated copies of all of Prophet Manasseh Jordan's text messages during a specific time period. So I just say, be careful what you ask for because once you open this door, you cannot close it. Once this case is in suit, everything is fair game at that point. And so in this hypothetical scenario, Bishop's attorneys would then get to read through all of Prophet Manasseh Jordan's text messages during that time period. And he would not get to pick and choose what the cell phone provider would send when they produce their authenticated records. And so these would be authenticated copies of Prophet Manasseh Jordan's text messages received directly from the custodian of records for Prophet Manasseh Jordan's cell phone provider under oath of affidavit. In addition, if an actual authenticated copy of this text message does in fact exist, it would have been sent to Prophet Manasseh Jordan when he was 25 years of age. Because again, it is my understanding that Prophet Manasseh Jordan's date of birth is April the 12th, 1991, which means he was 25 years of age at the time. And I'm sorry, but I do not see anything illegal in this text message that can be used in a court of law over a speculation objection if he's 25 years of age when the message was sent. The text message says, quote, thinking of you, end quote. And in a court of law, first of all, during the motions in limine stage of the trial, it would be, as we say, limited out. And it would never be seen by the jury. But even if it does get in, there will be speculation objections all over the place. For any attorney trying to purport any meaning from the time that the text message was sent or the image that was allegedly sent with it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is just not real life evidence in a real court of law. Notwithstanding, in the furtherance of this supposition of Prophet Manasseh Jordan's age during the time period, let's get it straight from the horse's mouth. In my 20s, I got to be around some of the biggest men and women of God. And I got to witness things because I got to see them without their armor. One of the things that really happens and seldom talk about is that there's something called grooming. And it happens in the Pentecostal church, it happens in many churches, but I'm referring to the black church specifically. And what that means is that there'll be a bishop, a pastor, apostle, someone who has big conferences, everybody knows, oh my God, they're the holy man of God. And they will pick their victims and they groom them. And it first goes through stage one where they ask you, questions. What are you into? What do you like? You need to tell daddy everything. And so they're using verbosity and they're using this type of garrulous narrative to try to make you feel uh, comfort, to make you build comfort with their victim. And then from there, it goes into stage two. And stage two is where it begins to become sexual. And it first starts by either making facetious jokes, um, making little statements in the windows. And then it goes into the questions of what turns you on? What do you like sexually? You need to tell me this because I need to know because I need to be able to pray for you. So it's almost like a psychological power game that they're playing with you. And in your head, if you say something wrong, they project it on you. They body shame you. Oh, you're too sexual. Oh, look at your body. Oh, you're the one that's making me do this. Oh, you. And so you have that in the back of your head. And then you also have in their head of their dumb, misinformed followers who are pushing this predatory narrative because they're so in awe with either trying to be like them, either worshiping them 
or not worshiping God or worshiping their denomination or where they come from. And so they're not even there seeing with the eyes of truth, but they're there seeing out of carnality. And so they're sitting up there and they're protecting them. And the leader, the bishop, the pastor, they know this. And so they know and they feel invisible. Oh, I can get away with this. I just have to make a statement to my church. I just have to tell them. And they're never going to question. Why is it so many people? Why is it always coming up? Why is everybody lying? So everybody's lying. Where there's a mouse, there's mice. And then it goes into the third stage. And the third stage is where they try to become intimate with you. And if you do not allow this, they drop you. They treat you like you're nothing. And they abandon that young male or that young woman. But from my experience, I can only speak from a young male point of view. They abandon that young male and they treat them like they're nothing because they didn't acquiesce to what they wanted sexually. And they look for another victim. And they know they can get away with it because their followers are not people that love the Lord. They worship the pastor. They worship the bishop. So they're not seeking for truth. And so this is the day and age that we're in. And I still believe that there are believers that do not worship personality, so to speak. They don't care who you are. They don't care if you're bishop this, prophet this, apostle that. But they really love the Lord. And so they really are worshiping the spirit of truth which is Jesus, and they really are about that, and so they can see past that. I wanna to say to victims that might not have a platform or might feel like you're gonna be judged and you can't say nothing, because this is what they try to tell you. You're gonna be judged, you can't say nothing. You're so in see the tear. You, you know, God is the judge. Yeah, we know God is the judge, but God judges people also through legal systems. God judges people also through other people. Okay, so he specifically says he was in his 20s. And if he was in his teens when this started, I think he would have said that. And once he goes through all three stages of this alleged behavior, it turns out that maybe nothing sexual actually occurred because he says that in the third stage, these bishops or apostles try to become intimate with you, but if you don't allow it, they drop you. And so at this point, it seems that we have a person who was in his 20s when nothing happened. And I certainly don't think that Bishop or anyone else is so holy that I would be upholding them in any wrong on this channel. And I think anybody who watches this channel knows that. But we're talking about grown ass men. I think everybody knows I call a spade a spade on this channel and I call it like I see it. I mean, why is it our responsibility to police up on the actions of men doing what men do? When it seems to me, Prophet Manasseh, that you should really be thanking the Lord that he delivered you from all of this madness. Because it sounds like what we have is someone who was gullible enough to think that Bishop really cared enough about him and was only interested in being his Christian mentor. And when he found out that that was not the real interest, allegedly, it now turns into this incredible anger and extreme disappointment. And I don't condone this behavior if that is what happened, but we all know that it is going on globally within the Christian clergy arena. But what are we as lay people in the pew supposed to do about it? And why is it our fault? And so now, ladies and gentlemen, I think now we're getting to the crux of my next question. Now having established that whatever allegedly happened, took place when this young man was in his 20s. And so, my next question is, why? I mean, why does this man want to bring all of this fire and fury on Bishop T.D. Jakes, allegedly? Because what we're seeing, in my opinion, is a very vindictive, angry man. And so, let's go back to this discussion. And you're calling me with I'm with some people I'm trying to date all times of the night. I'm standing on the phone with you for hours and hours and hours and hours. We're meeting each other need emotionally, predominantly, keyword predominantly emotionally. And why are you reaching out to Manasseh? So then he that's right. Somebody said jealous. Well, I'm not gonna say jealous. I am going to say betrayal. 
why are you reaching out to him? And you told me that Manasseh, I'm seeing him show up at church and sit on the front row at these conferences and on Sunday morning. How is it you telling me he just come to church and he just around, but you texting him at 233, that's our hours, saying you thinking of him with your chest flex. And this is the uh, the same time we're dealing. So when he called me today, he wanted more receipts and I obliged. And he realized that this was an overlap and now he feels manipulated and betrayed because he put his life on hold and listen to this hold your wig this is a 17 year relationship so when you ask yourself why we have people seemingly trying to move heaven and earth to make these so-called grooming allegations and in prophet manasseh jordan's own words to try to make people think that it could even rise to the level a sexual assault well to me it almost seems like it's a case of jilted lovers who found out they weren't the only side chick allegedly because we're using words like jealousy manipulation and betrayal but I think that's laughable when sister Sarita is sitting at home while all of this is going on but I guess that ain't none of my business y'all and then we're calling it a so-called emotional relationship predominantly. So nothing or not much of anything sexual is actually going on. <laughs> Y'all, I'm confused. But let me see if I can get some clarity. He be, I could hear in his voice as we were talking, he was getting more clear. More, he said, now wait, so I have missed out on living. And the best years, come on y'all, and probably missed some great relationships because I was making sure I was there for him emotionally. He, this is what he said. He said, I thought I was the only one. Now he knows now some things, but at the time he didn't know. So now he feels betrayed. He feels wrong. He now feels as though he was preyed upon that he was groomed to emotionally meet a need, but because he did not want to do a particular sexual act with Bishop T.D. Jakes, that's what he said, that he feel like that he, Jakes didn't have that part met, so he was trying to find it in Manasseh. <laughs> Lordy have mercy. Okay, now, so somebody was preyed upon and everybody is thinking they are the only one and all of them are now finding out that they were not the only one and this person is allegedly saying that he feels like he was groomed to quote meet an emotional need but because he didn't want to do a particular sexual act in quote he also feels like he was dropped like a hot potato like we heard prophet manasseh say so the person could now start trying to work on said Prophet Manasseh. <laughs> Lordy, y'all, this is a damn mess. And if this unknown person did actually do any particular sexual act, as opposed to the one that he would not do, well then any and all of those alleged sexual acts that he would do were never confirmed. And so this unknown person is feeling some type of way when he or she is the emotional side chick of a married man and he or she is upset because he or she finds out that the married man is having some kind of relationship with another man who just told us out of his own mouth just a few minutes earlier that he got dropped when he would not have an intimate relationship with the same man and now he's also mad with the same married man, allegedly. <laughs> and it's not quite clear if he's mad because he realized that Bishop did not care about him strictly as a Christian protege when he realized that it was something else that he was after, allegedly. Or if he wanted to have one of these strictly emotional relationships too. 
allegedly. It's really hard to tell, but he is clearly angry about something. But how angry is he? Hey fam, how are you? Don't worry about me. I'm home, I'm getting my little ab workout in. But I've been talking to you guys about the shadow world and we had a whole conversation about this Diddy situation. And I told you how a lot of things are gonna be exposed and my DMs went crazy. I mean, and I kinda had to speak in code. But now we're starting to watch it happen and it's about to go to another level. This is not only the exposure that's gonna be taking place of the Hollywood world, but now we're gonna start seeing it invading in the church world. And some of the ways of how people used to deal with these issues, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna vanish the same way. It's not gonna go away the same way. And the reason being is because God is tired of this BS, of this narcissistic arrogance that, that, that you are holier than thou, that you cannot be touched. There is going to be a particular person that's going to be the poster child in each industry. So for the financial industry, it was Epstein. For the crypto industry, it was Friedman. For the political industry, they're trying to make it be Trump. And for the church industry, <laughs> just put in the comments what you think. I'm gonna go talk about this deeper in my Patreon because the shift is hitting the fan. It's hitting it. Don't you smell it? Oh, it's hitting it. It's hitting it. Join my Patreon where I'll be able to talk more unfiltered. The unfiltered Manasseh Jordan. The stuff I can't say in the public. Go to my bio. The link is in my bio. We'll have more of a talk about this because we're about to see some giants fall. They're going to fall very hard. But we're going to see some new giants emerge. People that we never would have thought people would listen to. <laughs> oh my God. This is going to be big. Go to my Patreon. We'll talk to you in there. Yeah. I don't know if more facts are given during these Patreon sessions about what actually happened between these two men, but the reason that all of this is being exposed seems to be for monetary reasons, allegedly. But when we asked why the lawsuit is being filed, if not for money, we were told this. Apparently and allegedly, Manassas has already been asked, what do you want? And, and thrown eight, not eight digits at him manessa said clearly over and over don't ask me how i knew there is no money amount i do not want a dime y'all manessa don't need a dime but i don't want a dime and then he told me what he want y'all gonna be able to read it because it's gonna be in the um filing you 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 hear in the filing what i have said and more. <laughs> well, we are still waiting on this lawsuit. <laughs> oh, but anyway, y'all, let me stay focused because it was reported to me by one of the esteemed guests in my comment section who states, quote, Larry confirmed tonight that Manasseh hasn't filed yet. The lawyer is doing a demand letter first per Larry, end quote. So, in all of my years of practice as an insurance defense attorney, for some of the top insurance carriers, I have never received a demand letter that was not asking for money. The express purpose of a demand letter is to ask for money. So, from start to finish, this story has not been, in my opinion, as advertised, and quite frankly, I can't imagine what they're writing a demand letter for because if you ask me, the person that needs to be sending a damn demand letter is Sister Sarita. <laughs> but I guess that ain't none of my business, y'all. What do you think? I mean, when it comes right down to it, do you think Bishop did anything illegal to profit Manasseh Jordan that would be actionable in a criminal or a civil court of law when all of his contact with Bishop took place when he was in his 20s. 
And in addition to his seething anger at Bishop, why is he so angry with the congregation? Because we're not outraged when he discovers what we already knew. I mean, if he's a grown ass man and Bishop is a grown ass man, why is this any of our business? And why does he care whether or not we believe him or Bishop? Because we have yet to hear directly from anyone. I mean, anyone directly from any child who is making any allegations. Please let me know what you think by leaving your comments in the comment section below. And I hope you'll also give me a big thumbs up. And I hope you'll also consider donating to this video and my entire channel ministry by donating to the Professor Blackmore com cash app and i hope you'll also subscribe to my youtube channel and click the bell so you'll be notified whenever i come back with more hot tea from the church house the courthouse and everywhere else honey child and whenever i come back with more episodes in my church fellowship hall podcast series and please also follow me on tiktok and Instagram.